It's a week out from the Sydney to Gold Coast race and we're talking to Michael Coxon at North Sales in the loft in Sydney at Mona Vale. And we're going to talk about the boats and what's going on in uh, the race. Now, up the front it's going to be a good one because Wild Oats is there and also the ex Ragged Muffin. So what's your predictions here there, Mark? Uh, well, I think it'll be really interesting. Um, uh, I did this race last year on uh, uh, Perpetual Loyal and um, yeah, which we, we got line on and on, but with the only maxi yacht, uh, um, second was uh, Blackjack, um, the Volvo 70. So I think this year having the 200 footers uh, will be a really interesting race. The last time that happened, I think, was about four years ago, where um, uh, Wild Oats and Perpetual, or in those days was uh, Invested Loyal, uh, had a ding dong battle, and there was only nine minutes in it at the finish. Wild Oats picked this, but there was only nine minutes in it, so it was a fantastic race. So I think it's really interesting for the public to have the two maxis sub. And, uh, you know, it's um, sad to see that Sid's uh, no longer campaigning, but it's great to see that the old rags are back out on the water and uh, we'll fill new old rags and um, that she'll be giving uh, Oates a good run for money. Well, it's the same crew, basically, isn't it, really, uh, on Scallywag? So. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, and, you know, they did a lot of training last year and uh, they'll be getting better and better. And uh, so it'll be an interesting, uh, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the boats perform. It, it, it's a, always a different race going north than it is going south in the Hobart. Um, generally speaking, you've got uh, a lot more lighter airs, you've got uh, flatter water, um, you can get a lot of reaching in it. Uh, so, the, you know, th those conditions could actually uh, suit uh, the, the old rags, or scallywag as it's now called. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a great opportunity for Oates because she's done a lot of uh, work to improve her reaching performance. Uh, uh, when Comanche came out and you know, the wider, more powerful boat came out, they realised that their weakness was going to be that power sailing. So Oates has done a lot of work with uh, side boards or lining boards, whatever they call them, <laughs> um, and uh, worked on her reaching inventory a lot. So uh, it'll, it'll be uh, a good test for both boats and uh, give us a bit of a lead into the, the Hobart. New sails? Uh, we haven't put new sails on for uh, this race for, for Oates, but we've, uh, we've got uh, doing a new mainsail for Hobart and there's uh, a couple, another specialist uh, we're working on for, for reaching and which is a bit top secret at the moment and uh, also uh, you know, she'll, she'll uh, be getting a new jib so uh, yeah, more sales to come. Well behind them is the Volvo 70s, uh, there's three so I believe you're on? Yeah um, I'm on Maserati uh, so Maserati has uh, uh, been recently bought by uh, um, Jim uh, Cooney, who um, I only met Jim recently, a lovely man, went sailing with him and uh, uh, I just asked him if he was um, interested in me coming along and seeing if I can uh, give them any uh, help um, and he's finally having me on board. The uh, reason I did that is that Anthony Bell is uh, um, not campaigning the Maxi uh, uh, this year, so uh, basically Loyal is been parked up for a year and uh, so you know I saw Jim there as uh, um, he owns both Brindabella and he's bought uh, Bumblebee which he's turned into a cruising boat and now he's bought uh, the Maserati which was did a Hobart under the Italian flag last year so uh, um, he's kindly having me on board and it was a really fun to go for a sail with those guys because he sails with three of his kids and I want to say kids, they, they range from sort of, um, his daughter's about 21 and uh, through to one of his uh, son about 17, another one uh, you know, probably about 14. And uh, um, they're really involved, they uh, want to be active on the boat, they're trimming on the boat and it was just a really nice scene to see a family actually going yachting together. And it's a full, uh, and he's proud of the fact that it's a full uh, amateur crew and, uh, and when I say amateur crew they're, they're very confident. Uh, but they don't have professionals uh, as all the other Volvo boats do. Um, and I think the, that boat's weak point may be in the lighter airs and reaching because it uh, doesn't have the uh, optimised sail, meaning the big reaching sail. Um, so it hasn't got a, a mast head code viewer uh, because it's been kept uh, IRC rated until now. So 
Jim's got to make the decision whether he uh, wants to stay in that configuration or match it with the other uh, Volvo 70s. I think if you want to match it online on it, you're going to have to um, go basically towards the more optimised sales and let the rating go and uh, go for the boat speed. And that's certainly where Blackjack's gone. Blackjack's a really interesting project coming up because uh, she's still selling in the configuration she did the last Hobart. Uh, however, she has on order a, uh, a new mast and all new sails, and the rig's going to be around two and a half metres taller. So she, they are fully turboing her up. Well, it's true. Because bear in mind the Volvo boat's uh, design specification has been to sail around the world. So if anything, they're conservative in sail area, and as such, it, uh, for short coastal racing and around the boys racing, they suffer in that area to be you know, set up to go around the world and you know, sail in extreme conditions. So basically what Blackjack's doing is they're taking the Volvo and they're converting it to what I think will be a you know, very, very fast boat with a lot more sail air on it. So that'll be interesting to see for this coming Hobart. The mast, uh, the mast and sails will be commissioned in uh, uh, mid-November and she'll be fully wicked up for the Hobart. Speaking of Hobart and Volvo 70s, uh, Jim Delegate from New Zealand has got the boat in Australia this year. He'll be in the race also. He lost his mast in the Hobart race, didn't he? Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that one. Which, uh, sorry, the which Giacomo? Oh, jo oh, yes, oh, yeah, yes, uh, no, the New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. yeah Richard Bicknell's um, uh, Richard Bicknell's on that boat from North mm -hmm. South New Zealand, mm -hmm. and um, a good friend of mine, Tommy Braidwood, he's also sailing on. I would love to have him sail with me again this year. He sailed on loyal with us. So they've got a very good crew and uh, they certainly know that boat very, very well. She'll do well too against uh, Blackjack? Yes, I think that they'll, they'll give each other a good race. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens when Blackjack goes bigger again in the rig. Yeah, well, Australia. Mm -hmm. What about Chinese Whispers? She's uh, she's a JV62. Yep, yep. How will she go against the Volvo 70s uh, in this configuration? I, I think, look, at the end of the day, Waterline is king. Um, so I think that uh, she'll she'll hang on in the lighter airs, um, but I think uh, overall she'll struggle because you, you can't make up her 10 foot of water line. Now, next, nine TP52s. Yeah, isn't that amazing? It's, um, uh, I think uh, it's a credit to, to the Australian yachting scene and, and the owners that uh, we've been able to gather that many boats uh, down in Australia now. Um, you know, as a legacy of, uh, I guess, the TP circuit. You know, they, they basically keep building new boats for the TP circuit. It's a full arms race uh, up there. The so they're only doing 12 or 13 boats up there, so we've got nine here. Yeah, exactly. So but, but, they, but what they do is they regularly, probably every two or three years, those owners tend to turn those boats uh, over because they're effectively one design sailing and they're always looking for that small improvement. And as such, these very, very good quality boats um, become available and at uh, very reasonable prices. Um, the only thing you've got to be a little bit careful with or be aware of and the owners are that they're often built for um, med conditions mm -hmm. so they need to be uh, basically uh, beefed up for Hobart conditions but you know, both in the rigs and the uh, the rigs and the hull uh, but a lot of the boats have been converted and made strong enough for, for Hobart conditions. Well that's one of the reasons why Balance which is the old quest is yep. so, uh, so w goes so well in this particular area because she was an American boat, wasn't she? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, yeah, it, it's a very well sailed boat, and it, under different owners, it's always performed perform well, so I think it's a good all round offshore boat. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mike Green on uh, balance, he's, uh, oh, very experienced. he's been on the boat for a lot of years. He has been on the boat for a lot of years, and he's a very experienced offshore sailor. So, Indeed, yeah. You know, it's a very well campaigned boat uh, for Clifford. Uh, Matt uh, from uh, Yachting Australia. Yep. Um, he's got itchy yep. bone. Yeah, Matt Allen. He's, Matt Allen. Uh, Matt's campaigning. Uh, you know, he still uh, uh, campaigns both his uh, uh, 60 at, uh, footer and he's also got the 52. Uh, I think that he his 52 would be regarded as the number one uh, in uh, in Australia at the moment. Um, he you know, won the Port Stevens Regatta convincingly uh, uh, last month, and uh, you know I think that he he is the boat to beat there. Um, you know, he's a very, very, very good campaigner and he's been doing it a long time and has a, you know, a very, very good crew. The Perth uh, boat that was uh, had the problems in Hobart race, M3, mm -hmm. uh, she's in the race. How do you think she'll go? Um, I don't know a lot about her, um, so, you know, I, you know, I really can't comment because I don't know enough about who the crew are and 
and uh, how you know how, how they've been going and but um, you know it'll be interesting to see I think that with that many boats it's just going to be races within races the whole way. So, Sean Langman is uh, sailing RKO. Uh, yeah, I believe um, Sean has just pulled out, so uh, oh, due yeah. to um, uh, a, a personal issue, so um, he he won't be there. So they're just reconfiguring their crew at the moment. I've been uh, speaking uh, with Aaron Rowe, the owner, but it's great to see uh, um, Aaron uh, uh, you know, get into the TV 52s. Um, I've only recently met him. He's a very nice chap. He's he's young and uh, he's enthusiastic about yachting. So uh, I think it's, he's going to be a great asset to the sport. Then there's rags with... Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, David Brendan? Witt's a great campaigner. No, the Brendan Fisher. Oh, the Brendan, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry, the, the 52, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah they'll, they'll, it's great to see that boat still sailing, um, yeah. you know, with the big boat being pulled out of, uh, uh, or, or being sold. So it's really great to see that they're still keeping the ragamuffin name going. Indeed. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a very solid campaigner and have been doing it for a long time. Celestial? Uh, yeah, she's she's another, she's a, yep, she's another. Frantic. Yep, she's another one that you know. That they're all fairly new. When I say fairly new, that, that they're only all just starting to sail against each other. So I think that you'll find there are boats that are going to have their strengths and weaknesses, um, and yeah, you know, meaning that some will be stronger in light airs, some will be stronger in reaching, running, yeah. upwind. So I think what we will find out is what boats got strengths in what conditions. Okay. Um, and, but that'll be completely different when it comes to the Hobart race. Like oh, I would say, yeah. when it blows hard in the uh, Southport race, it normally blows hard from behind. Yeah. So uh, it tends to be, and, and it gets warmer as you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Southport, I think, is a, very, is a really nice way to start the season because it's a, uh, an easy way to break the crews in and to give them a shakedown. But I do think the Southport race is a, re Southport race is a key race to actually prepare for your Hobart because it, although it's an easier race, it actually gives you your first um, overnight experience for the crew for the season. And um, there are not a lot of overnight races thereafter um, to, to work on. So this gives you yeah, two or three nights at sea and uh, lets you get your, yeah, basically get your job list for what you've got to improve for leading into the Hobart. It doesn't take long to get uh, around to uh, um, the end of uh, December again. And North Sales, Nick's been done. But Nick's on uh, Patrice with Tony yeah, Cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Nick, our service manager, mm. is uh, going to be sailing with on Patrice, and we've also got one of our uh, trainees, Matt, who's a, a um, very keen uh, young sailor from. Uh, from Melbourne, he's uh, going to also be sailing on board, so we're well represented there. And uh, yeah, that's a very, very good boat. So if it's a if it's a uh, medium-sized boat race, I think she'll be the boat to, to watch for for the IRC. Any other boats that you've got your eye on? Or? Um, oh, look, it, there's a big entry. I think it's close to 70 boats. Yeah, so uh, it, you know, it's really going to be a weather dependent. Yeah. Um, you know, traditionally the big boats don't win this race. Uh, because they, there are a number of light air parking lots and what happens is the little boats catch up. I mean, I've done this race on big boats many times where you wake up in the morning and there are 40 footers uh, sitting around, bum bobbing around alongside you where you've got stuck under a headland somewhere <laughs> because you've also got tidal gates um, right, with, yeah. the, with the southerly set and I haven't actually done my homework yet. I, I'll have to get onto that, but how the set's running at the moment. But you can get some pretty big tidal gates. And what happens is the breeze drops out at night. Typical, um, you know, typical uh, you know, westerly situation off the uh, east coast of Australia in winter. Um, you know, you basically get uh, soft patches at night until the, uh, the, the, the west hill come in about um, one or two in the morning. And so you'll actually find when the sun goes down, it gets lighter and lighter, and you get the boats parking up. The big boats get to the headlands, there's a tidal gate there against them, they struggle to get past it, and what happens is the westerlies will fill in across the lower land, um, the small boats will go in and hug the, uh, hug the shore, and sail right up behind the big boats again, yeah. where the big boats will tend to, uh, um, when they can get further offshore, although the set's worse, you'll find that there's often, more, often during the day a little bit more pressure offshore, so they go offshore and the little boats just keep hugging the coast generally and just get shunted back up again in the, uh, in the uh, evening westerly. And uh, as I say, I've, I've woken up quite often on a 100-footer with 40-footers sitting alongside me. <laughs> <laughs> Demoralising, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, 
not a good look with the owner. <laughs> Who looks at you and wonders what you're doing. <laughs> well, the, the race is a really a feeder up to Hamill and Arnold, isn't it, for the yeah. Hamill series? Yeah, it's a great feeder for Hamill, yeah. and uh, and I think that uh, it, and then it's followed then by the Keppel race. I know I know uh, Blackjack and uh, Oates are both backing up to do the uh, uh, Brisbane to Keppel race uh, shortly after that. So. So it's a, it's a you know it's a great great of a start start of a great circuit for for a lot of people who. It's good to see Sandy uh, looking after the boat and uh, and putting it into all these races now. Oh, most definitely. I think that um, you know I think obviously everyone was wondering with you know, the passing of Bob whether yeah. the boat would keep going and not only did it keep going, he's he's fully into it. Um, That's uh, excellent. Rico actually, um, I was speaking to him a couple of days ago. He called up to make sure everything's happening. Yeah, you know, we're all thinking about how to keep the boat going. He said. He had dinner recently with Sandy, and Sandy's keen to make sure that all the boxes are ticked. So they don't want any excuses. Um, you know, I think that, that you know they'll be work, really working on their crew work and preparation. And uh, they don't. No one knows whether Comanche's coming up for Hobart. Um, I spoke to Ken Reed about two weeks ago, and you know he said basically it was 50-50 whether the boat was going to come out. Uh, Jim only just has to you know, make that final call. And uh, but they're going to be prepared and ready, so uh, um, that's keeping uh, Rico on his toes also because <laughs> they've got to be prepared for another maxi being there. And not only you know will there be uh, uh, Scallywag, the X Rags, but uh, you know we'll we'll also you know very may may very well see Comanche back out again. So up at uh, Hamo though, mate, um, I believe you've got a bit of a loft up there, have you? Yeah, every year we um, we take a full service facility. We have a trailer that uh, box yeah covered in trailer that we load sewing machines in um, um, repair materials spare battens you name it we take the whole lot as a travelling circus um, because without that you know, there's you know, there's, well, there'll be 300 boats sailing up there and the, the island doesn't have any service facility in in many years ago we used to actually uh, set up a, a service on the mainland by using one of the local small uh, lofts. But it really wasn't practical to do so, and um, we, we had a partnership there to do that. But they couldn't make any money out of it. By the time you took, took the sales backwards and forwards, and you know, it, was, it was just too hard. So, so we made the commitment, and with the support of the island, um, the Oakleys kindly uh, provide us a, uh, a a great room, which we turn you know, from one of their reception rooms into a sail loft overnight, and uh, we set up there with machines a whole lot. But it's, it's a it's a big exercise, but it's really important, and it's supporting the Oatley family to put on the race because without sales service, it's one of those things behind the scene nobody really appreciates. That's right. But without it, um, you know, the boats, so many of the boats couldn't keep sailing. That's right. So, uh, so we're up there every year, and it's our bit, you know, the little thing we can do to support the the race program and uh, to support the Oatleys as well on this fantastic regatta. You'll be sailing, eh? Uh, yes, I'm going to be sailing on uh, Concubine, a, a, a Ter uh, 46 uh, South Australian boat. Really looking forward to that. Um, I'm uh, teaming up with a, an old friend, Noel Drennan, who uh, uh, used to work for us in Melbourne, and uh, he's a professional sailor. He does the TP52 circuit, and he now lives in um, Florida. But he's going to come out and uh, do the main sheet for me, and I'll be doing the tactics on the boat. So looking uh, forward to, uh, to sailing on her and and getting in amongst the, uh, the, the you know the bigger fleet with um, you know, a little bit smaller boat. And uh, Alvy's on Wild Oats is here. Ah, uh, yep. Alvy's going to be uh, looking after Wild Oats. He's got to go. I think he's got to pull out. Can't do the last race because he's got to then go to Palmer where he's doing the mini mini maxis. Uh, oh, poor Alvy. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so he gets the good jobs, he just uh, follows the sun. So he, he's doing fine. Um, we've got um, uh, Aaron Cole who runs our Melbourne loft, he's going to be uh, on Patrice. Um, yeah, so we've got a very good representation up there. Um, you know, and you know, it's a, one of the, the fun regattas and a really good way to start the season off. And to end it up, mate, um, you know, what's been happening? What's been going on? Give us some. some uh, I've been doing. Well, I mean, I've been doing a lot of work uh, on etchels over the winter period. Um, there's a, been a resurgence with etchels. Uh, there are five new boats on order. Um, I'm working closely with uh, Tom King, and uh, he's getting the first of the new boats. Uh, they've just modified the moulds and so on, and uh, he's getting the first boat out. So um, 
Tom was in yesterday, we're doing a bit of uh, sail development and testing and we're going out again tomorrow if the winds are, are suitable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's been, that's been exciting, but uh, the actuals are going from strength to strength. And you know, I really enjoy the balance of the one design sailing with the yacht sailing because I think they complement each other. The, the one design helps keep you sharp for the big boats. Yeah. And uh, if you do too much of one or too much of the other, you, 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 I think you lose your edge. Yeah. Uh, and it's just great uh, with the actuals to get behind um, a lot of uh, um, a lot of the top sailors actually sail in that class, and then we'll go on to sailing in, you know, on the big boats also, so you know, it really complements. Uh, other things are um, the MC38s, they're, they're, they're just so much fun, you know, the, the circuit's going, it was uh, quietened it down for a little while, but it's, uh, we've got Neville Crichton back out in the fleet again, and uh, so, you know, I've been really enjoying sailing, uh, I've been sailing on Assassin with Robin Crawford, um, and it's just a, a, a great uh, scene, that MC38, um, it's such close racing, and uh, it, it attracts a lot of good sailors, and um, they're just fun. They like sailing. They're like 18-foot skiffs on steroids. Well, yeah. Look at Leslie. Leslie Green. Well, Have that that is an amazing story. It I is. mean, uh, yeah, there are two amazing stories if, if you look at age and yachting. I mean, you've got uh, in the Dragons, you've got Gordon Ingate, who at his 90, this just turned 90, I believe. Yes. Well, in his 89th year, he won the Australian Championships again. <laughs> Uh, and then you've got Leslie Green, I don't think Leslie will mind me saying, I believe Leslie's now 83 or maybe just turned 84. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he regularly wins, in fact you'd, you'd say he's the most consistent performer in the MC38 class. Now there is a class oh, he of gives skiffs, it to them. skiffs on steroids <laughs> and we have an 83 year old who is just... Whipping them. Yeah, and has the, the biggest smile on his face after, well, after he wins the Riata. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and just such a lovely gentleman. And uh, just shows you that, yeah, you, we're in a sport where you can do from the age from, yeah, you know, I was going to say eight to 80. I think I'll have to change that from uh, nine to 90 uh, <laughs> and still be competitive. So, well, yeah, you go from Opties to That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's really a credit to our sport. And it's one of the few, few sports in the world where you can actively compete and you can be competitive your whole life. I was talking to Matt uh, Carroll the other day and he was saying that, um, that uh, Anthony Bell, uh, your, uh, your mm. skipper, is going to the Olympics as a mentor. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, which is good to see, that sort of thing. Yeah, because, yeah uh, no, it, it is. I think uh, I, I had lunch with Matt Allen uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago and he was telling me about that and yeah. you're getting Anthony involved and yeah. Anthony's very, as we've seen with the, the support he's done with uh, charity, raising money with the Loyal Foundation for Humpty Dumpty Foundation for um, Children's Hospitals. Uh, Anthony's very, got very good connections, he's very good, very enthusiastic and I think that he will be a mentor, he will also I think help secure some sponsors and I, I think he, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think it's a secret, but he, you know, he had aspirations if he can help Australia put together an America's Cup team long term, yeah. I think that he, he's very keen to see that happen. Oh, the, uh, yeah. the youth one, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, he's very good friends with Tom Slingsby. Yeah. and who uh, also sailed on Loyal with us. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he, you know, Anthony Denji is a, go from the Olympics to then also trying to see if we can help Australia with a, uh, an America's Cup team. That would be excellent. Now what's happening with Loyal itself, the boat? Uh, the, the boat is, Anthony decided uh, to you know, basically put it on ice for a year. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he's focusing on these other things at the moment with the Olympics and so on. Uh, he's got a young family. So it's basically just uh, on a holding pattern, and uh, we'll wait and see. What, watch this spot. Will we see him at the Hobart start next year? Or this uh, year? Well, this year, um, he says not, but I. He always he hasn't. He's, it's, <laughs> it's amazed me what he's been able to achieve in yachting in a short period of time. So never underestimate what Anthony's up to. Well, uh, I'd watch this space. What you, well, what's your plans for the rest of the year, for yourself uh, personally? Oh, really, it's, uh, you know, I, I support my team here in, at North Sales. We've got a great uh, team, both in the, the service side and the, um, the uh, selling and service side. And I just uh, look to where I can help my sales team uh, help service our clients. So <laughs> Very good one, man. <laughs> just, there's, I, there's been too, many, too much politics in the air here, I think. <laughs> okay. No, seriously. Well, well, I don't have a plan at this stage, a fixed plan for Hobart, yeah. um, because uh, I was basically waiting for 
Anthony to make his call. He's only recently decided to, to uh, not to take loyal in the, you know, the South Port and Hobart. So that's freed me up. Um, <laughs> but some people say uh, you should never go on a smaller boat, so I've got to find 100 water. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think they're pretty well catered for the hundred footers. Oh, they do. They, they have lots of people on board. Yeah, yeah. You don't want, you don't want too many chiefs. I'm getting too too old to be an Indian. I know what you mean. Well, thank you very much. No problem at all. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, buddy.